AGM tweets, Linus Torvalds is angry. Programmers are angry people. You know what, AGM? Some of the people I work with, you'd be angry too. <laughs> Ryan Block tweets, Linus Torvalds' crowning achievement, Linux or Git debate. Why do I have to have just one crowning achievement? I can do both. Pike tweets, apparently Linux dual booting exists because Linus Torvalds wanted to play Prince of Persia on DOS. Pike, not anymore. We've got Steam on Linux now. has been one of the worst trouble spot we've had with hardware manufacturers. And that is really sad because NVIDIA tries to sell chips, a lot of chips, into the Android market. And NVIDIA has been the single worst company we've ever dealt with. So NVIDIA, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you some friends there. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that other companies are perfect either. We, we, we have had companies that just don't care. We've had companies that felt that Linux wasn't a big enough market. We've had, uh, we'd have situations like that. At the same time, there's a lot of companies that have been very helpful since very early days. And it's, I think it's very sad when you sell hardware and you actually use Linux and you're being really difficult about it. And, and I really, yes, I'm, I'm sad when it happens. We can't do anything about it, but it's life. I wish everybody was as nice as I am. <laughs> Ooh. Translation. So we're going to go to Ubuntu and we'll start here. All right, how to get a little Ubuntu system installed. Uh, get rid of this guy here. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do, like I've already previously done, um, is to download a copy of Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu is probably one of the more friendlier Linuxes to a, a new user. Um, there's a fair bit of community support and uh, yeah, you, you, most people are going to start out this way and it's, it's fairly easy to use and you sh hopefully shouldn't have to pop into the command line too much. Um, so yeah, you can go to ubuntu.com, download a copy, uh, download a copy for the desktop most likely. Um, there are two versions available at the time of doing this video, uh, the long-term support version. Um, I had a problem actually, it, it uh, had a problem with this getting it installed, it uh, crashed out about 99% uh, into it and it probably installed okay but uh, I, I don't want to recommend uh, nuking a system so generally uh, do a backup, do a backup of all your stuff um, make sure you got copies of everything that you feel is important that, to you um, either one of these is probably fine. I'm going to be doing this on a, a virtual machine, so a computer emulator, essentially. Um, that could have been my problem for the crash, but uh, this one worked fine. So maybe it's maybe it's the Ubuntu and the virtual machine not working together. But uh, I had an issue loading this one up. I run this one right now. The issue with that is you're not going to have the long-term support. So if you want to be on the bleeding edge, go this route. If you want the long-term support, go this route. Um, that means more security and maintenance updates and that kind of stuff for a longer period of time. Otherwise you may have to upgrade again sooner or later, or sooner than later. Um, so yeah, uh, you're going to have to take a look at the hardware you have. Uh, that's pretty easy. You're going to want to look up what processor you have. Uh, uh, if it's Intel or AMD, you can generally go look at the uh, site from Intel or AMD and find out if it's a 32-bit or 64-bit processor. And then you can make a choice in this box based on your current hardware. Um, if it's something recent, it's probably going to be 64-bit. Uh, it's like dual core or any, anything kind of in that range is generally going to be 64-bit. Um, if it's a really old machine, you're definitely going to want to check this and make sure that it's uh, it, make sure it's not 32, or if it is 32, make sure you get the 32-bit version. 
you can run the 32-bit version on a 64-bit box. It, uh, it's not going to benefit from it, but uh, it'll run fine. So it's not going to matter which one you choose if you have a 64-bit machine and you're just, you know, tinkering around. But I would recommend that if you got the 64-bit machine, get the 64-bit uh, version. Uh, it's becoming less of a problem, but uh, there are some programs that haven't been written to uh, take advantage or be compiled or built for 64 bits. So if you can get into some really special need where you need some program that only runs in a 32-bit world right now and the author hasn't updated it, then um, yeah, 32-bit might might be better for you in general just to make things a little bit easier for you. But I would go 64-bit more often than not and I chose Ubuntu 15.10 for what we're about to do. So let's say you've got an old laptop or old uh, old PC or you're going to build a new PC and that's kind of what we're going to do here. Um, this is VirtualBox and it allows me to create a virtual PC and that's kind of what I've done here. So we've got a general Linux system and pretty basic. I've given it 4 gigs of RAM. It's got one processor. Not a whole lot to it. It's got a little bit of graphics memory and it's got a storage. So I've basically I've put the download that I got from Ubuntu. They have a nice little uh, guide here that I'll show you in a second. But I downloaded a .iso file and that's basically almost like a photographic image of a CD. Uh, where you could take that .iso file and burn it to another CD, just a straight copy. Um, so that .iso file I've loaded in to my CD-ROM in my vir virtual computer here. Uh, I've got an audio device and network and all that stuff. So this is my virtual computer. You're going to have real hardware, a laptop or something like that. It just This will allow me to show it to you much easier. You can burn this disk, this download, to a CD. You can also put it on a USB stick. Uh, they give you pretty good instructions here on how to do that, how to burn it on Windows, and how to create a USB stick. I would, uh, it's going to depend. If you got a DVD drive, I'd probably burn off a disk and do it that way. That, it's a little bit simpler. I found some systems are really tend to be picky about uh, if they boot and how they boot off USB sticks. Uh, but give the USB stick a try, it's probably the easiest. You probably got one kicking around that's two gigs or higher. and um, You can load up this uh, pen drive Linux. The download is right here on the Ubuntu site. And uh, you can choose the distribution in here or you can download the ISO uh, file. and select the browse button, select uh, the ISO file, pop it in there and create making sure that you select the right drive here for your USB stick and it will uh, create you a bootable USB stick that you can reboot your computer and boot off of. That's going to be the trickiest part of this whole ordeal. Um, every computer is a little different there. Uh, I don't have any live examples but uh, see if I can pop some up here. So, uh, BIOS boot uh, F12, see if that shows. So you're gonna basically be looking to get a, a menu like this when you boot up the computer. Um, you can do, you can set this in the BIOS, but uh, this is kind of a good example here. When you boot up your computer, you get this kind of stuff. For a quick second, you'll have the opportunity to push F2 or F12 or something. It'll give you an option. Sometimes it'll be like this. So F2 for setup, F12 if you want to boot from the network, or F8 if you want a BBS pop-up. BBS pop-up uh, is the, the boot control. So you, you, when you boot up your computer, you boot it up, see the screen, push F8 and it'll give you a menu that'll look like this. Uh, if you have that USB stick connected in the front, uh, it should display in here. If it does, you can go down to it with the arrow keys and hit enter. Um, the other option is to go into the BIOS here, so if you push 2 to enter setup or 
whatever your setup menu is. Uh, let's see if we can find a boot order. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here we go, here's one. So each, each computer is going to be a little bit different what kind of BIOS they have, but uh, once you pop into there, you can use the arrow keys to navigate around. There's usually a boot menu, um, and you'll have certain boot devices and what priority they have. So you can make the USB stick first priority, and uh, you may have to reboot a couple times for it to acknowledge the uh, USB stick is there. If you put it in while you're in the BIOS, it won't be automatically detected. You'll need to reboot, and then it'll detect it on booting up, and then you'll get into the BIOS again. So, um, you'll need to set the, the boot order to get this to set, or choose the, the boot menu, or this, this type menu on booting, and choose either the DVD if you burnt it to a DVD, or a US, USB stick if you burnt it to the USB stick. Um, hopefully that covers most of that, but this seems to be the the hardest part for me, really. Um, I've had a whole lot of times where the USB key just doesn't want to boot, and a CD-ROM or a DVD-ROM just has been the way to go. Some people don't have that option. I, I don't have a, an optical drive in this machine, so... Uh, sometimes it's an option, sometimes it's not. Uh, it could be a little bit of tinkering around to get that done. So since I don't have real hardware, we're not going to see too much of that, I don't think. I have set up a, a larger drive. I did this a bit earlier, and I had too small of a drive to show off things. So I've made a bigger drive, and uh, we'll hopefully show off some things once Linux is installed. Uh, I've put a drive into the CD-ROM, and we're all going to go OK, and we're going to start this machine. So I, I actually, there was a push F12 to boot there while this machine was booting up. So this would be your, we'll call it your window into my computer. <laughs> Just check the stream here, looks all good. So you boot to 1510, booting up. And you should be greeted with a menu to install. If it stays with a black screen or stays in a really um, kind of just black text spewing all over the screen, then uh, your hardware might not be very compatible. But uh, or you may be having hardware problems. Uh, so yes, you should be greeted with this menu here. You have lots of ang or languages to choose from. Um, if you are really impatient, I would, uh, well, it depends on your, your impatience. If you like to play games while things are installing, choose the Try Ubuntu thing. Otherwise, you can just install Ubuntu. Uh, if you just want to kind of test drive things, running it off of the USB stick, you can choose Try Ubuntu. Anything you do in there, I mean, it's a... It's not gonna. It's not gonna be saved. So if you like set up an email account in Thunderbird or something like that while you're trying Ubuntu and you reboot, all that's gone. So basically, this is just for trying it out. This would be good for uh, something if you if your computer ever went down, you could keep that USB stick on the shelf and uh, boot it up and browse to the bank site, check your check your bank and reboot and not have to really worry about uh, any of that data kicking around too much. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try Ubuntu just because uh, I can open solitaire while things are installing. So we should boot into a kind of bit of a desktop environment. Sorry for the extra noise there. House needs to be heated. Okay, so you get a bunch of keyboard shortcuts there, and this is the stock Ubuntu desktop. I'm going to double click the installer, and if you wanted to play Solitaire while you were installing, you can search up Solitaire in this menu here. And boom, there's some Solitaire. So we can load that up as well. Boom, there you go. Uh, English will continue. It has some space. 
this is going to take forever and I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be and this is uh, for mp3s uh, Linux is generally built on free and open software if uh, we can't see the source code for it then or it's licensed I mean proprietary wise then it's not going to make it into a distribution uh, you as a user have the choice of installing something like that and you're more than open to do something like that but uh, it won't be provided by default so uh, in this case to play mp3s by default they've given you the option to choose so you can choose to install that or not um, it's going to take it just a wee bit longer to do it on here so I'm not going to worry about it um, at this screen you are going to probably be presented if you have Windows already installed on this machine with a, a different options here. Um, you're going to have the option probably to install Ubuntu alongside Windows. Uh, that could be risky. Make sure you have a backup if you try that. It could be risky just depending on if it has to resize the partition and if, it, if it's able to do it. Um, then you have the option for removing Windows. You're going to have to look through the options, choose the one that's best for you without nuking your stuff. <laughs> uh, read it two or three times, you know, measure three times, cut once, but uh, yeah. In this case, since it's a blank disk, I only have uh, install. I just erase and install. Uh, I would not recommend encrypting if this is your first time. If you lose the key for the encryption, it's going bye-bye. Uh, LVM, it might be nice to check this if you want to have easier partition or uh, drive resizing and that kind of stuff later. Buy a bigger drive, you can easily change your partition and yeah, it's this may not be an option with the Windows setup, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I haven't used Windows in a long time. so. And you have a something else menu which actually gets fairly complicated, so unless you know what you're doing, I would stay, stay out of there. Uh, this is our only option, so we will install. And uh, wants to double check and make sure that everything's right. Do that. <laughs> double check, triple check. And then it's going to ask you for your location, uh, more for time zone, and that kind of stuff and uh, keyboard layout, language layout and then it's going to ask you for some login for information so I'll just set it to Joe and set up a password and you can set it to log in automatically or if you need a password to log in so we'll set login automatically and away it goes so not too much different than a Windows install or Mac install. And I think I still have Solitaire there. I do, I do. So again, figuring that one out is just uh, up to this menu up here and then you can type in Sol and it should show up. But I really shouldn't be doing that. It's copying files, so it's going to take a little bit to do its installation and it's going to run a little slow because I'm running a computer in a computer and it's trying to do things should be just about done here Alright, so installation is finished up, and we can do a restart. At uh, some point here, before it actually reboots, I think, about this screen, it'll tell you to uh, remove, the, remove the installation media, and uh, shouldn't give you a bunch of those, but it should ask you to uh, remove the installation media, and then you can reboot. 
going to reset. So on first boot, hopefully uh, you get greeted with the login screen and no black screens of death or anything like that. Sometimes you get just a black login prompt like that and generally means the video system wasn't able to load properly. So It happens, sometimes there's fixes. Sometimes the hardware just really isn't quite compatible, but more often than not it works. So here's a keyboard shortcuts that they'll pop up and show you right off the bat. Um, I don't like this, uh, this menu system. This is what they call Unity. Um, I'm not a fan of it. If you uh, take the time to get used to it, it would probably be beneficial going forward because uh, this is, seems to be the way that they want to do things. Um, I like this old way up here. I have my, my menu and almost kind of like a start menu style just on the top of the screen and then my, my windows and stuff are down here. Uh, that's uh, the way that things kind of used to be in Ubuntu, but uh, they've, they've changed to this, this system. I like to change it, so we're going to do that on this and show you, you how to change it. Uh, there's a program called the Terminal, and I didn't want to get into this real quickly, but we're going to have to do that to change some appearances here. And I could get in, here's the big old sound again, sorry about that. Um, I got to keep warm. The uh, Linux basically has user accounts, just like uh, Windows. There's also an administrator. Um, you generally do not run as an administrator. Uh, it gives too many privileges to too many people if they manage to get in. So, uh, in a Linux world, you will generally, to install something, you'll need higher permissions. Uh, to get those permissions, you'll have to run a program called sudo. Uh, sudo just gives your account temporary administrator permissions. So uh, we will type sudo. Um, Linux, or not Linux in general, but usually Linux distributions will have a package manager, uh, we'll call it application manager or something like that. It uh, basically it decides how to install different applications, what packages that uh, they require to to function properly. Um, in the Linux world, the, the coders are basically making little bits and pieces that all get thrown together into applications, and if you don't have all the pieces, then you can't build the final product. So uh, you'll have a package manager or something like that that will maintain these packages for you. Some, some distributions don't have that, and it's all maintained by hand, which is painful. Um, some have decent package managers, some don't. Uh, this, uh, some of that's a lot of personal opinion, so I'm not going to get into that. The uh, package manager that Ubuntu comes with is called apt-get. Um, so you can actually type apt-get and hyphen hyphen help and get some information to be back at you. We'll do that right now. Uh, you don't need administrator privileges to get some help out of this app. But, uh, and if you type hyphen hyphen help there, so apt-get hyphen hyphen help, it gives you a bunch of information. You can do that for almost any application that's out there, but just a little bit of in oops, a little bit of info there. So we're gonna go sudo apt-get. And since this is a package manager, we want to install something. Well, what do we want to install? We want to change the desktop environment. Um, I don't like this desktop environment, so I want to change it to the mate desktop environment, which is what I use here. Uh, so that is mate-desktop-environment. You type enter, and it will ask you for that password to get administrator privileges. So we'll type in the password, 
And at this point, it's gonna ask, it's gonna go look at what packages need to be installed, and it's gonna ask if I want to install them. And I'm going to say yes, I want to install them, and push enter. So there's a whole lot of stuff flying through the screen, but it's not really overly that complicated. Um, basically, what's going on here? We can open it up. Is we're downloading a bunch of packages. So we're getting. And grandpa and p7zip and all these different packages libx264 the video and xvid core so we're getting all these different packages that the desktop environment that I like uh, relies upon not really complicated but you're just seeing it as text flying by so uh, a lot of this is like getting overly complicated for me beginner kind of thing, but I just wanted to show how it's possible to change the desktop environment to something that's maybe a little closer to uh, to Windows. You could get something like KDE, which would actually look a fair bit more like Windows, but uh, I need something in the middle ground here that's uh, halfway Linux and more like Windows, so it's not totally scary, you're not totally confused, and it doesn't throw you off. And that's what I've found. Uh, I've moved my mom, I've moved my dad over, and they are they just they browse the web and check their email, and that's really about all they do. And the Unity system, it worked for dad, not so much for mom, so it's kind of hit and miss. We have downloaded all the packages now, and it's uh, unpacking all the packages. They're compressed, and after it's done unpacking them all, it will install them all. And as long as there was no errors, it should return back to the prompt with uh, basically ready to go. Um, I'll show you then how to access that uh, that desktop environment. Um, accessed at the login screen which uh, we logged in automatically so we're gonna have to log out and then choose the new desktop environment and log back in from that point uh, we'll go and install some more applications we get Chrome installed we'll do a little bit of video playback and, uh, maybe install audacity and show some of those things that would be common for someone either doing guitar or uh, maybe maybe a little bit of video processing there's there's open shot and some things for video but uh, unless you're an FFmpeg guru then uh, you're gonna have some challenges ahead of you with video I think so everything's done we're back to a command prompt and nothing really said error here so that's a good sign up in the top corner here we have the ability to go to system settings um, lock it, uh, change users, or log out, so, and shut down. So we're going to log out here, and log out. And we will be brought back to the login screen. Um, since uh, the, the previous time I'd actually showed this, but if you log out, sometimes this won't be here, and that's because there's only one desktop environment installed. Uh, now that I've installed the second one, I have Mate, and I have Ubuntu Default. So we can choose Mate now, and log in as Joe. And now that we've logged in as Joe, we have the menu up top here, with accessories and education and games and graphics, all that kind of stuff, all your nice stuff. You have your computer, your desktop, your home folder. Your home folder is kind of like a uh, yeah, where you've got your documents, downloads, music, pictures, all that kind of stuff. And system, you've got your preferences, and administration, adding printers, control center, yeah. All that fun stuff. And then the logout that was up in the corner here is now under system. So, uh, if you right click on the desktop, you can make new folders, open terminal. Um, I'm not sure why I'm not getting. Uh, desktop background here now, but uh, we can go into preferences, I think. 
Where do we have it here? Displays? No. Is it under displays? I don't think it's under appearance. Yeah, so... Themes... There we go. So this is... I usually run under Blockmate. And now we're looking a little bit more like my system. And... Change the desktop background. So, there you go. You got a... Nice little machine here now. Uh, there is a... This little box here may confuse you. You have essentially four desktops. Right now, you can you can configure that however you want. Um, if I open up open up a new home folder, I can go to Workspace Two. So everything's still open over in Workspace One. I can open up a calculator here. So I got a calculator open on Workspace Two. I've got home folder open over here. You can, go over to another desktop, so it's kind of like uh, just different work areas. You could set one up as an audio encoding area or audio work area. You have your email on another one. This is really handy, especially if you're just limited to one screen. So that's what that is, just in case you're, in case you're curious. Uh, you can right click on these panels and add to panels as well. So. I've added, like up here, I've got my Chrome, and speaking of which, we can go into Applications, Internet, Firefox. Let's go get Chrome. So we can go search for Chrome here. So Google Chrome. I prefer Chrome to Firefox, but... Uh, to each their own. If you like Firefox, that's good. So I want to download for personal computer and download Chrome. Uh, 64 bit. And again, you're going to need to know uh, if you're 64 bit or 32 bit. And uh, you can save it or open it with the software center. We'll open it with the software center. Yeah, so that opens automatically. And if you leave it alone long enough, it should just uh, pop over to the install. Yeah. And since I've changed my theme, some of the colors on this mate theme. Uh, like you may be better staying with the original setup. I've had a little bit of issues with some of these fonts not showing up properly, being able to change the colors properly too. So there is an install button that appeared over here. I click that. Uh, it may ask you for your administrator password because it's uh, it needs the permissions to install. as it's installing here. It's probably very hard to read with these poor font colors. Some of that's the theming issues, and again, that that takes a little bit of tweaking. Here's the, the password screen. And it should finish installing fairly quickly here. Thinking, thinking, thinking. I wonder if we can fix that theme. Just in appearances, probably not, though. Oh, I changed the text color, so. Blue Submarine. Oh, we can live with Blue Submarine because we can see the text and it's relatively pretty. So, Okay, so Chrome is installed and uh, reinstall button here. Uh, we're also going to, while we're in the software center, we might as well search for VLC and we can do some video playback. So we can click install on that guy. And we might as well grab Audacity too. So that's in there. 
we install Audacity. And it wants the password again. That'll come up fairly often, but uh, better safe than sorry. Basically, anytime like you would have had that uh, Windows UAC kind of pop up, you're going to get prompted for password. Uh, it's going to keep you safer. So it should be, you know, we're installing VLC and Audacity. We can close out uh, Firefox here. Under Applications, we should have Chrome now. So Chrome is installed. And if you want, you can make it your default browser. And there we go, there's Chrome. If we go to YouTube, no problem. So, works, no problems. I don't know if you can hear the audio. If you can, that's great. I don't want to play too much SNL there, but uh, Chrome is working. So back to the software center here. VLC is fairly big, so it's going to take take a little bit to install. Uh, by default, you've got some, you've got uh, unzip support and all that. Now you may have to install unzip, but uh, archive support, calculator built in, disk management, uh, anything reasonable. Uh, the office suite is built in. A few games. Uh, we should probably install GIMP. So GIMP is like your Photoshop, so we can search for that as well. GIMP, G-I-M-P. Uh, Pigeon for instant messaging maybe, but uh, most people are probably into Facebook and YouTube, Google Plus, Twitter. So games installing. VLC is done. So now under sound and video we have Audacity and we also have VLC. So we can load up VLC. And there's there's your media. If we got a stream of something. I don't know if we have any any videos. If I could type, I'll download a sample video, show in folder, downloads, and open with BLC. And again, it's a huge video trying to play on a virtualized computer, so this. This video playback will be dependent on your, your system. Should work fine though. It's just, yeah. Trying to play too big of a video on a virtual computer. But there's your video playback. We can launch into Audacity here as well. Uh, the easiest way that I have found to manage audio devices. So, talk about that a little bit. Um, again, we're going to pop into the terminal here. I double check that this is uh, that's still that's still going. Um, I don't want to interrupt that. So, audio devices. Let's see if they're just running the audio control by default. One thing I like to install is PavView Control. It gives you control. Uh, if you've seen some of the other videos I've been doing, that's what I use to control the audio inputs. 
So audio accessories or where's the terminal? System tools? Mate terminal, there we go. You can control Alt T as well. It should open up a terminal window, but uh, we will sudo for administrator privileges. Apt get for the package manager. Ask it to install. Have you control? Uh, I think this is pulse audio volume control or something. I don't know what it stands for, but uh, that's what it stands for to me. So this is still downloading. Hopefully we don't interrupt it. Yeah, it's it's locked right now, so it gave me an error here. Basically, the package manager can only be interacted by one person at a time, or one application at a time. Uh, the application that first gets access to it locks it. Um, that's the error that you see here. I've tried to install something while this is going in the background, and uh, the lock file has been created. So it looks like that install is done. It should be unlocked now. You can push up arrow in the terminal to show your last command that you would uh, you would use. So if I push up arrow, it shows my last command. Up arrow again, the command before that. Um, so yeah, I did a sudo apt-get install pavu control. Uh, if I get rid of the sudo apt-get install, I can just run pavu control, and this gives me a whole lot more volume options. So playback, recording, output devices, input devices, and what the configuration of them is. So on my main system here, I've got three NVIDIA cards with HDMI, and they're all audio devices. I've got the onboard audio, I've got a USB input. It gets fairly complicated, and you can use this to change all your sources. I use it as main volume instead of, uh, instead of this guy here and I've created a PAVU control link up here. Uh, that was done. I think I went into add new panel and custom application launcher and PAVU control and PAVU control comment PAVU control and now when you click that, boom, you got the volume control up there all the time. If you uh, don't like the icon, you can change that to something else. Ooh, dolphins with evil. <laughs> There's got to be a volume one in here somewhere. Ah, oh, whatever that'll do. Snowflakes. It's Christmas. So you got a snowflake there now. You can choose all your audio devices. Uh, if you wanted to have Chrome up here too, it's pretty sure you can go over here to Chrome and you can go drag it there. Boom. You need to open Chrome. There it is. Uh, you have a hard time finding the terminal like I did. You can drag the terminal up here too. And that's all installed, so we can take a look at Audacity, I think. Yeah, so Audacity's there. Get in, you can do some recording. Once that I mean once Audacity's going, you can go in here, you've got recording devices and you can tell it which device to record from. Uh, if you had more devices, there's obviously gonna be more devices pop up into this list and then you can set its recording volume. That uh, runs on something called Pulse Audio, and I mean, there's there's a lot of you can dig deep into the audio world in Linux, but uh, this is the easiest way that I've found to do things um, without having a headache. Really, uh, Pavu Control has just been awesome. What else can we do here? Uh, we can install something that's only supposed to run in Windows. We don't want to save changes. 
So what's a Windows app that uh, somebody would like to run that we might be able to get running? Er, what do I run in Wine? Got all kinds of stuff in here, don't I? No, I don't. Um, okay, so we'll just install Wine and run Notepad. Uh, that's probably the most basic example I can give. We'll see if Wine is in the software center to start out with. Where is it? Software and accessories. Where's the software center go? Oh, it's probably under here. Yeah, administration software center. One. Let's go and do we get yeah? Wine. So the Windows, Microsoft Windows compatibility layer. Install. Now, some things are going to run in Wine, some things are not. You can generally get an idea if it's going to run from winehq.com, I think. Uh, it could be .org or something else, but. Here's a password again because it's uh, wanting to get permissions to install something. So once Wine is installed, when you download an EXE file, it'll be able to be opened by Wine. Uh, again, this is getting into a little bit of not for not for new stuff, but I figured I'd just run through it because people say that it can't be done. Well, it can be done. It's just some very uh, some very special programs or generally newer newer Windows stuff doesn't run because support hasn't been added for it. But if there's been demand to get something running in Linux, there's a good chance that someone's figured it out. It just takes time and dedication, really. This is taking a fair bit. Let's see if we can find something in uh, WineHQ. So this WineHQ will tell you you'll be able to search for different applications. And it will tell you what runs. Uh, a lot of games have been able to run. Uh, it looks like Photoshop's kind of there. Problems here and there. iTunes. Uh, you may, depending on an Apple device, uh, if you have to do s some of the very special things like resetting some of the, uh, the Apple devices, I think iTunes was necessary. Or if you'd... Uh, you locked it. I think it was only iTunes that could unlock it or something like that. That may have changed since, but uh, where are we out here? Looks like we're a little bit busy. It's thinking about stuff. Not wanting to respond to me here. Wine's a bigger package, so obviously taking a little bit longer on this virtual box. Adobe Edition, Grand Theft Auto, what what can we install here that uh, SIW. Would SIW work? System information for Windows. That was always a favorite of mine when I was debugging people's computers. I think he wanted money though, so 
probably comes with all kinds of malware now. <laughs> no, wine's taking a long time here. Additional drivers. Uh, I can mention that again. I mentioned that in the, the first go around. Um, by default, uh, graphics graphics cards, uh, generally Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. Uh, there are a few other manufacturers, but those are the main ones that you're going to come across. Uh, Intel support is usually fairly good uh, until you get up to the the newer hybrid stuff. Uh, some of that may be off and on depending on the hardware you have. If you have an AMD there's two different sets of drivers that, or two or three different sets of drivers that you can end up using. Uh, you can use the free open source ones which are the ones that generally come prepackaged with Ubuntu or you can what, use the ones that come from the uh, from AMD or ATI. Uh, those drivers it, it's again depending on what you like better if you have problems with one of the drivers but uh, AMD basically provides a closed source or you can't look at the source code version of those drivers uh, again they won't be included but you can install them by going to the, the restricted additional drivers menu up here um, same thing for NVIDIA uh, NVIDIA is usually supported out by default, but not the proprietary drivers. Uh, you can go and install those. Uh, again, a little bit tricky if you're doing more than one monitor. Um, a little bit tricky if you're doing more than one card. Uh, I have three cards in this actual machine, and uh, getting the actual desktop to go across six displays it was was a little bit tricky to get set up but once it's set up it was pretty good this seems to have really locked up here and like just the the software center is locked up doing wine it's not locked up it's still doing its thing but uh, like the actual machine still chugging away uh, I can look at the status here. HTOP won't be installed. Top will be installed. So apt is, yeah, it's still crunching away. So you've got your browser, uh, internet, you've got Thunderbird Mail. If you use a, a client other than Gmail, most people probably use Gmail now. Uh, I thought I installed GIMP here. Usually that should be under graphics, but... The Office Suite, so you will have a document viewer that can read pretty much all your Microsoft Word documents, save them as Microsoft Word, uh, LibreOffice. You have, uh, Calc, so a spreadsheet, draw, impress, math, writer, so whole kind of office suite there. Default install. Rasso is a CD burner. This is a webcam tester. Uh, there's my PavView control that I finished installing there. I well, got a nice uh, pull this up maybe. Yeah, there we go. So I get rid of my snowflake, right click and remove from panel. Well, there's my audio control with the proper icon. <laughs> Why are you taking forever wine? This is part of the reason I like to install things from the terminal. You can watch what the actual status of things flying through were. For some reason, uh, software center seems to have hung up and not want to come back here and try closing it which isn't a good thing to do while you're trying to install software but we're gonna force quit and find out what's going on 
just try running sudo apt get install wine. And yes, I have a very clicky keyboard. Oh, we're locked here. So I had to force quit. This is where you get really stuck. So I'm going to sudo rm, which is remove that lock file. Because basically I force quitted the or force quit the application. It didn't have a chance to remove the lock file that it should have had. It says wine's already installed. Okay, that's great. is there too. So down at the bottom I've got wine. Uh, they want to do... Okay, so it was having a hard time downloading the font installer. I won't worry about that. Uh, if we go into wine here, Accessories, notepad, see if that's working. Okay, configure wine for the first time. And there's a Windows notepad. Uh, let's try and get some Windows software. What's well, popular Windows software? I don't know, it's been freaking almost 10 years. Yeah, all the stuff to keep your PC clean. <laughs> oh, wow. You know things have gotten bad when your top 10 items are antivirus, clean up, uh, yeah, okay. Clean up, clean up. Might as well be clean up. PC speed up. Uh, driver easy, okay. And that's like your package manager. Uh, virtual DJ8, yeah, sure. So what, 75% of your top 10 is how to keep your machine from getting infected. Uh, what do I download here? I don't want to get virtual DJ, it's probably a little... Let's see if Photoscape runs, no? I remember Major Geeks being fairly credible. But this was all like tools for... This was all just tools and stuff too. What I got in mind? Oh, well, there's Internet Explorer. So let's do the most, the worst thing we could do. And can we run Internet Explorer? So when you have an exe file and you're just sitting in your Ubuntu environment, you can go down to right click on it and generally it's going to want to open with archive manager for some weird reason. But if you go open with and then wine program loader, there's Internet Explorer in Linux. It's wine Internet Explorer, but uh, yeah. So you basically, if you had a setup.exe, uh, you could go set up and open with Wine, and it will run your setup application, hopefully. Uh, if that all completes, fine. 
under the wine menu you should have now programs and your new program where you installed it kind of like the start menu uh, here I've just got notepad so Let's see if I know something I always used to use was TS reader so reader light see if we can grab that So here's an exe file downloading, show in folder. TS Reader reads transport streams. Transport streams are what the cable company sends to your TV uh, videos packaged into a, a transport stream. Audio and video on different, uh, different PIDs and yeah, your cable box decodes the transport stream and puts it on your TV. So we've downloaded an exe file. I right click it, open it with one. And there's a setup, a Windows setup. Click next, accept, next, 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 next. Good old Windows. <laughs> Pushing next till the cows come home. Okay, launch application. Finish, boom, there's your application. This uh, actually wants to look for some kind of device to get the, the transport stream from. Uh, there should be a file stream in here somewhere. So boom, choose a file stream. And just, uh, we'll, let's go download transport stream real quick. Okay. Just to show that this really does all work and Sample transport stream, so football. Looks like there's football and weather and a bunch of stuff in this one, so we'll save that. And we'll put it in videos. So football.ts. And this is going to be kind of tough to explain, but uh, Linux runs on the kind of trees tree structure. So if I, the the root of Linux is slash. So if I want to ls slash, if I do this with a knife l, this is kind of where the tree starts. So you've got slash and then you've got a bin folder or dev folder. Inside dev is where all your kind of device things go. Uh, you have a home folder where all of your users are. So if I, I made Joe here as a user, if I ls, ls is a list. Uh, I list home, I'm gonna get Joe. So Joe. And now in Joe's folder is desktop documents, downloads, music, photos, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so let's call C is kind of equal to slash. Kind of. It depends on your drive. It's not quite true, but uh, for for a new person's kind of sake, it's like looking at your C drive. Um, somewhat. A lot of people could say different things, but just to give an idea, um, Wine installs itself under your user. So I'm running as Joe, and Wine puts in a nice little dot line folder and the dot in the front makes it hidden. Inside there we have DOS devices and we have drive C here. So this is the C drive within line. So it's created a C drive for itself. We look in drive C, we've got program files, and users, and the Windows folder. So it's basically faking faking a Windows environment. Um, inside program files is Internet Explorer and yeah, stuff we already looked at there in, in the Wine program files directory. I bring that up because when you go to actually start using files in Wine, if you, if you uh, let's say you wanted to use Photoshop and you wanted to open up an image you're going to open it up and it's going to look at 
it, it could be in your Photoshop folder or something like that. You're going to go back and there's that drive C and dot line folder and then Joe and then home. So you're sitting kind of a folder within a folder uh, or windows within a Linux kind of deal. Um, your, some of your files may be back in the Linux world way back out in Joe here. But uh, yeah, I just I, I kind of wanted to show that it's still a tree, and in the wine environment, you have this this tree within a tree. So when you are browsing for files, like the one I just downloaded, I downloaded it to my videos folder. We downloaded football, and it's in uh, it's in videos here. When I go to load that up in uh, TS Reader. Still open there. Yeah, if I go wine programs, where'd it go? Okay, it didn't install me uh, an option there. TS Reader, and we'll open TS Reader with wine. Now it's looking for a file and it's back in their TS Reader directory. I've got to go back to my home folder all the way back. Back to Joe. And then I've got my videos folder. It's looking for an MPEG. I've only got a TS. So we'll feed it a TS. And there's your there's your football coming through the TS file and also a weather stream. Here's all the information about the, the stream in there. So you got one PID that's carrying, uh, or you got three programs here actually. Program two, three, and four. That's got uh, audio and video, audio video, audio video. So three different channels actually coming in that one single file. Probably came off a satellite or something. But anyway, there was a Windows program running in Linux. Uh, not really complicated but you kind of got to understand that you're you're faking a Windows environment in Linux so um, it is possible not everything runs uh, we can I guess go do let's see if uh, Google Earth works I know there's a copy of Google Earth so most of the basic stuff should be covered uh, if you really need something special, there's somebody's probably found a way to do it. So, yeah, just download it, click it, and it should open up the software center. So when all of this stuff starts to fail, it, it's going to be a little complicated the first time, uh, if, it, if it does, or if your, your hardware doesn't like it, or... There's always the odd bug that comes up, so. I just wanted to run through a bunch of installation and stuff. Uh, some of the other video will show the install a little better, but this kind of shows that you can do pretty much anything you do on a Windows system and not have to worry about, A, running antivirus. <laughs> uh, that's going to probably change more and more, but I mean... There's not a whole lot of great antivirus for a Linux system right now anyway. It's more about keeping it secure than letting a virus in in the first place. Uh, Google Earth taking a little while too. An actual machine will should be a little quicker than this too, considering that I am emulating a machine, and that's the wrong password. So I stored that video file in uh, 
videos. That's uh, in the home folder. Places, home folder. And if I go to my computer here, here is slash. So, computer is slash. Inside you've got all those different folders. There's your home folder. There's temporary directory. Um, yeah, dev is where kind of all your devices get access from. Inside dev, you've got CPU, disk, and it's a basically a very file-based operating system. So while we wait for Google Earth, here's the splash into home, into Joe into videos and there's the football.ts almost done installed and should have internet Google Earth. How well does it work in a virtual machine? Ooh, it's a little choppy. But it works, so. I didn't give this machine very much graphics, so. But it is possible. Um, some music playback. There's a rhythm box, which isn't too bad, but uh, it tends to dock itself up in here. And yeah, you can have it scan your playlist if you really wanted. You could try installing iTunes and Wine. Don't try doing that. Um, it's possible, though. I would only try doing that if you really needed to reset an Apple device, though. Uh, there is some fairly good iPad support. I think it's in Rhythmbox. For at least updating your music and that kind of stuff. That, that could change at any moment because Apple could change one day and make things horrible for everybody the next day. So yeah, I think that's really about it. Uh, yeah, so your notepad is G-Edit, at least in, in this setup. You got a, a notepad, you got your browser, you can put in an email client, you can put in a video player. That's going to cover 90, 95% of your, your users. When you get into the power of users, they're going to know how to use most of this stuff, so... Hopefully that covers most of it. Um, you can spend years learning terminal stuff. I know I have. Uh, I've been at this for about, well, seven to eight years uh, with Windows gone. Uh, I mucked around with Linux here and there previous to that with uh, messing with the Xbox, but to just totally get rid of Windows and run it, it's been seven years since I've had a main Windows PC so if I've skipped anything over or skipped anything really critical or need any help don't hesitate to hit me up and uh, yeah give it a shot can't hurt and if anything you're just gonna refer do a fresh Windows install over top of everything and have a nice fresh Windows install so it's worth a shot, it's worth trying, and if you can handle uh, if you can handle it, then I wouldn't go back. Not a chance. So I'll do just a quick I guess reboot and we're not gonna get a real fast reboot out of this thing, but if you have an SSD some and a decent system for this setup, it'll boot very, very, very quickly. 
yeah, this, uh, this here also, FSCK, is uh, checking the integrity of the, your, your file system. So if, uh, if it's doing that, let it do its thing. Generally, it'll do it every so many boots. And then, yeah, boom, you're logged back in. Uh, if you do dual boot with Windows, you will get a menu popping up uh, after your BIOS screen that asks you, do you want to boot into Windows or do you want to boot into Ubuntu? So I think that pretty much covers uh, most of it for getting started. Uh, again, look through the Software Center. There's a whole lot of help online. And yeah, just try it, get into it not that hard to do. The hardest thing is really getting to, or getting a USB or DVD to boot. And uh, hopefully the screenshots and explanation earlier in the video showed how to do that. I will close this up. I'm shutting down now. Take care, everybody. Thanks for kicking around. Whoever